Don't start forget there's newest update to Terrors Below is officially out now, everyone. Animation, skins, changes in all mind, and while we've covered every inch of this dang thing for over two weeks, including some very fresh main menu music that just released yesterday for Pete's sake, putting all the information in one place seems like the proper thing to do, so let's get to it. And we begin with the two ways to actually encounter these shadow rifts, settings, or death. Adjusting the former makes it to where our caves will essentially generate with a rift immediately day one, which could appeal to some out there while the traditional route is going to take a bit more time in doing. The latter option requires a few weaver kill, an offering of five dreadstone to the beckoning hand, complete with a whole new warning prompt mind, a short but sweet visit from the Queen of Shadows herself, where she ups and repairs the ancient gateway very casual-like, and finally an additional five-day waiting period following all that, up until a rift finally initially spawns into the caves. Yeah, it's a whole thing, but what if we can't find a rift, you ask? Well, the game will then warn us with a red flash indicating that a rift has actually reached full power, and said rift will now appear on the map in mush tree forests, muddy biomes, and even stalagmite branches if it has the space to do so. Make notes. As these very rifts deserve a bit of a deep dive themselves, surrounding them will be a cloud of miasma of varying sizes that will blind us, slow our movements, and most notably drain our hells by two every two seconds or so. Thankfully though, we've got options options to counter all events, like Sandstorm Gear. Wearing it will negate the slowdown, but not the drain, while the new Void Cow will actually prevent the drain, but not the movement penalty. So my advice, just burn it all. Fire removes the miasma entirely, so finding a rift early enough to help clear the thing forever will be huge, especially when that couples with how the fresh-faced shade leans work as well. Not only are they essentially non-hostile unless we get too close to a rift of theirs, their numbers are very low early on in the rift's life cycle. At level 1, rifts only spawn 1 to 2 shadelings every half a day. Come an expansion to level 2 4 to 5 days later that only climbs to 3 to 4 shadelings, which still gives us ample opportunities to isolate one of them from the rest, as yes, they're actually not horde-like. And lastly, level 3 rifts spew out 5 shadelings every minute or so, so getting here early is best sure, but it's not going to be the be-all end-all. To continue, rifts will last for roughly 20 days in total before disappearing with both their leftover miasma and shadelings, only for them to return six days later to start the whole damn thing over again, mind. Be prepared, as while these shadelings truly aren't much of a threat, it's really only thanks to bright shade gear at the end of the day. They do deal 10 planar damage and have some planar defense, so quote-unquote normal gear isn't as effective, but even still, they hardly attack themselves, and that leap you see does literally nothing. The biggest scares are the dread mites both during and after the fight, but get it done and enjoy a whopping four pure horrors per kill. And yes, that's a pretty big freaking deal. As is this stuff though, acid rain. Only a concern when a rift is active mind, this stuff works to quickly deteriorate clothing, perishable items, and even our healths. Just know that the former has been toned down quite a lot since the beta, I must say. Health-wise, however, the tick damage can easily reach killer proportions, so do not ignore what's to come. Yes, higher intensity rains do impact everything to a greater degree, but our own waterproofness does too. Lower levels of it won't do too much to slow it down, but it can and will do something at least. Mid-tier gear can see health draining every 15 seconds instead in most cases, and 100% waterproofness stops the health drain entirely at the cost of the item over time. All that said, while it's supposed to be only waterproofed items themselves that drain, the new void gear grants fully mutant to the ceiling leaks entirely, with the umbrella not only slowing down those other drains we mentioned, but actually regenerating under this toxicity as well. You got it? Good. As acid rain also turns every cave pond into a niter formation that will drop four chunks of the stuff guaranteed, gives battleisks a buff to their damages, drop rates, attack speeds, and a whole new drop in their inventory in niter itself, and lastly, blooms wormwoods. Yup. It's all the thing. As are these guys, Ink Blights, spawn via the Dreadstone outcropping at the very first Nightmare Fissure we encounter following a Rift spawn, and no, the Nightmare Cycle itself doesn't matter here. They are actually called Jitters, Rasp, and Shriek, but for whatever reason, only Wilsons with the Shadow Courtier skill can actually know that for now. Whatever the case, do note that if the outcrop generates where you don't like it, you can leave the screen, only for it to pop out at another nearby Fissure mere minutes 
minutes later. Less even, as you can see, the set piece is also surrounded by miasma, so deal with that as you please, because you might want to snag that three dreadstone from the thing, as it is missable. But bring a good pick axe, or just have rafts smash it for ya. But how should we handle these discount shadow pieces, you ask? Well, Jitters is by far the easiest to isolate, so I would always start there. Rafts doesn't melee so much until left for last, so perhaps baiting out his slow slam should be next as Shriek is slow herself. And speaking of, Shriek also only fires one attack where we last were, so dodging this dread rain over and over and over again is very simple and clean, so I would maybe save that for last. Bring Bright Shade and you'll be fine, as trust me, these guys are shockingly easy. They also drop far more Dark Tatters now, so enjoy those on top of Nightmare Fuel, Pure Horror, and that potential Dreadstone, and be sure to do it all over again come three days later once the Outcrops respawn timer ends. Good luck. As it's finally time to bring it all together, folks. And to do so, we'll need a Shadowcraft Plinth Kit here that will grant us access to the four Void Crafts wherever we choose. So to fire through what they do, that Umbrella we saw earlier is honestly just a really souped up Umbrella at the cost of a meager sanity drain there. The Reaper reaps most pickable things in this game while also talking to anyone who is Shadow Aligned, but please be sure to use it wisely for mass harvests over individual reaps, of course. The Reaper also serves as a weapon that deals 38 damage with 18 more planar on top of that, which helps add up well once used on a vulnerable lunar mob at the end of the day. Combine it with the void armor, however, for a flat 10% damage boost, but a charge ability as well that helps up the damage six times through six consecutive hits, which also synergizes very well once put into action against, you guessed it, lunar-based enemies. But said void armor has other set bonuses, like having their sanity drain to five when both worn over just one individual piece. And yes, everything is shadow-based, so Maxwell and Wanda benefit from both very greatly. And finally, each help prevent more damage taken via shadows, with both simply doing a better job of it. So make notes. As to truly wrap up comes the extra tidbits, except the scrapbook. Let's start with Boulder Earthquakes. An active rift means Boulder Earthquakes, however Boulder Earthquakes won't actually fall on structures, so do with that as you please. Resting horrors appear on ruins chairs when a rift is rifting, but only if we're insane enough to see them mind, and they themselves can drop a pure horror and a blueprint for replica chairs if that matters to you. And lastly, the Nightmare Werepig now finally drops not only his own figure sketch, but a blueprint for dreadstone walls as well. So enjoy it all. As there you have everyone, the complete guide to From Beyond's Terror Below for Don't Starve Together. And now that the content is in full release, we can expect an animation breakdown soon, a skin showcase to follow suit, of course, and maybe even a trip down memory lane to the Carnival after that. But thanks for watching, folks. Well, wish it to all, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.